Getting a bacterial infection sucks. There's a whole lot of going to the doctor, getting antibiotics, taking them for weeks, maybe they work, yada, yada, yada. But what if we stopped taking pills and instead used sound waves to treat them? On this episode of the Oxford Sparks Big Questions podcast, we're asking, how can we use sound waves to eliminate infections? Hello, I'm Emily Elias, and this is the show where we seek out the brightest minds at the University of Oxford and we ask them the big questions. And for this one, we have found a researcher who loves to tinker with ultrasound. Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Sarah Keller. I'm a postdoctoral researcher here at Oxford, um, and I work in the Institute of Biomedical Engineering, which is part of the engineering department here at Oxford. And my background is in therapeutic ultrasound, so using typical standard ultrasound in a new way to do a wide number of things. And actually, the lab that I'm in here at Oxford kind of focuses on on that. So we use therapeutic ultrasound as a method of Uh, enhancing targeted drug delivery, for example, or what I do, which is breaking up bacterial infections. So like an infection, like a regular bog standard infection that I would go to my doctor for, you're looking at getting rid of it through an ultrasound. Yeah, exactly. So probably we have all experienced bacterial infections. So strep throat is an example of a bacterial infection that's super common. Um, Urinary tract infections or UTIs, also a bacterial infection, which are really, really common. And they can also be really life-threatening. So sepsis is an infection of essentially the bloodstream, and that can be lethal. And so probably we have all heard of antibiotic resistance in which um, the antibiotic drugs that um, have worked in the past are not as effective anymore. And so what we're trying to do is basically bridge the gap between like We currently have antibiotics that are working but are becoming less effective. And so we want to find new ways of treating infections that might be able to kind of solve some of those critical issues that will be appearing in the next decade or so where infections are becoming a lot more resistant. So how would this work in theory? Because using ultrasound is something that I wouldn't necessarily associate with treating an infection. Yeah, for sure. And I think realistically, like... It's a treatment option that would probably only exist, at least in the short term, in a clinical setting. So one good example that that I like to think of is is a a urinary tract infection or a bladder infection in which bacteria colonize the the walls of the bladder or the the walls of the urinary tract. Um, And so what we look at is using um, these tiny little bubbles called micro bubbles, so literally like micron sized bubbles. Um, And they are actually used currently clinically as um, ultrasound contrast agents. So pretty much all imaging modalities, so MRI, CT, um, et cetera, have contrast agents. And for for ultrasound, it's, it's little bubbles that when they are hit with an ultrasound wave, they oscillate. And so what I think this technique might be used clinically is like we could insert a catheter or something into the um, into the bladder, introduce microbubbles, and then um, basically break them up with with ultrasound. And the mechanical action of hitting the microbubbles with ultrasound, we think, will cause physical breakup of a bacterial infection. What would the microbubbles like do exactly? inside me? Like if I'm hitting them with ultrasound, what happens to them? Yeah. So it's useful to kind of think of ultrasound as a wave of pressure. So it's basically you have oscillating positive and negative pressure. And so when you put a, um, you know, a compressible gas within that positive and negative pressure environment and the gas being what's constrained within the bubble, the bubble will um, shrink and expand basically in those alternating positive and negative pressure environments. Periods. And so that that shrinking and expanding is really what we're using to, to facilitate this, this mechanical action. And what's really cool about bubbles is that the way in which they, they expand and they shrink changes based on how much ultrasound pressure you apply. So if you're applying kind of a really low pressure, the, the oscillation might just be, you know, expand and contract, expand and contract, contract forever. Um, But if you hit them with a really high pressure, then they might violently collapse and become and basically get destroyed. 
And so that violent collapse is what we're really interested in because we think that that can cause the most amount of mechanical force on our bacterial infection. Violent shaking of bubbles is what will break up the infection is the theory, but it wouldn't hurt me and my precious, precious bladder that I want to keep safe. Yeah, I mean, the the really cool part about ultrasound is that um, similar to like how you can focus in light with a magnifying glass. So for example, like I feel like as kids, we might have have tried to focus in sunlight with a magnifying glass to burn a piece of paper. Ultrasound works in the same exact way. So if you focus your sound waves in to a specific point in the body, then you can cause that really high pressure environment to happen at a really localized area. And so in that way, we can um, make sure that our bubbles are, you know, doing their violent collapse and oscillation in the area that we're interested in. And another, like, just cool part, and one of the reasons that I became really interested in using ultrasound is that the fact that it can both image and apply therapy is really exciting. So we can use what we call image-guided therapy. So you use your ultrasound imaging to be able to figure out where you should apply therapy, and then you can then you can ramp up the pressure and, and cause your mechanical effect. So it's really like a, a technology that you can that you don't have to, to know everything about the the system before starting it. You can be a little bit more like on the fly, I guess, with like how you target your ultrasound wave. And so kind of along the lines of of using ultrasound as an image-guided kind of treatment, we can also use the echoes that microbubbles emit um, when they're hit with ultrasound to also kind of monitor how effective our therapies are. So in my previous example, where we have a low pressure ultrasound causes microbubbles to expand and contract in kind of like a known and not very violent way, versus the the violent collapse of bubbles. The the bubbles, they emit distinct ultrasound sounds that we can then pick up and and localize and characterize. And so the way that we usually like to think about it is when a bubble is oscillating in a way that's not violent, it might emit frequencies that are very discrete. So for example, like if we hit it with one frequency, the bubble will also emit that frequency as well as maybe um, harmonics of that. So if you're familiar with musical instruments, um, the way that we think about harmonics is like octaves. So, you know, you may send a low A to the bubble and the bubble will emit that low A and also an octave above that A, so a higher A. However, if we um, hit the bubble really hard with like really high pressure ultrasound, the bubble will emit that low A, as well as every other sound that goes between that low A and the higher A. And so if we can isolate those incidents, then we can know how violent the bubble was was collapsing. And therefore, we can have an idea of of how effective our therapy might be. And does it sound sort of musical if you were to like, I know it's ultrasound, so it's like difficult to actually like put onto a podcast, (laughs) but like... So yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, so we wouldn't be able to hear it because ultrasound is is beyond the frequency that we can hear. So it's I think that's actually yeah how it's defined is is frequencies beyond the the human ear. But if you want to think about like yeah, so you know if we hit an, a bubble with like uh, then the bubble will emit like uh. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's like it's it's literally sending out octaves of, of sound. Versus just a bunch of random noise if it's if it's violently collapsing, and so and I I I don't think I want to make everyone hear my my interpretation of of a bunch of random noise. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot going on here. This all sounds quite theoretical, though. Like you are working in a lab, how do you actually spend your day trying to replicate sort of using microbubbles to break up infections? So I grow essentially very small bacterial infections in a very controlled way. So I grow bacteria within a culture dish. Um, What's kind of cool is that we can take bacterial strains that have been isolated from specific infections. So for example, we've got some isolates from, from urinary tract infections and others from like infective endocarditis. So it should be like theoretically quite similar to the types of infections that might exist clinically. But I just grow them as individual species uh, biofilms, which are um, just, I allow the bacteria to kind of grow and propagate as it would in any other type of environment. Um, 
for two days and then I shoot them with ultrasound. And what I've been doing recently is trying to see if I can correlate the amount of bubble energy, that bubble sound that we've been, um, that I mentioned before, so that all of the noise that the bubbles emit, if I can correlate how much noise they emit with how good our therapy is, meaning like how good we are at removing bacteria from the infection model that we have. And then we can kind of understand like, okay, so we know now that this amount of ultrasound bubble activity like results in this amount of bacterial loss. And therefore we might be able to be able to use those similar types of of energies in, in a clinical setting. So it just gives us a better understanding of like how much pressure, how much bubble, you know, wonkiness is really required to remove bacteria. And when you say remove bacteria, do you mean like the bacteria is like removed from that area and then could go somewhere else in the body and still be an infection or like properly kill it and it no longer is like a danger to the human body? Yeah. So that's a really good question. And that's exactly what we're trying to figure out. Like, I think one of the the big questions is, are we actually destroying bacteria or are we just moving it? And I think that there are like, it doesn't necessarily mean, like if we're just removing them and not killing them, it doesn't mean that we're not applying an effective therapy. One of the challenges um, in just, you know, having our, our own human immune cells fight infections is that bacteria are really good at um, protecting themselves with a bunch of um, proteins and, and sugars and extracellular kind of just junk that they use to kind of shield themselves from our body. And so possibly just being able to, you know, break up the infection such that our body is able to, to fight it back and recognize it as bad, like could be enough. Um, or it could be that it requires, you know, not just the ultrasound treatment, but also an antibiotic, which again, um, one of the challenges of antibiotics is just penetration through an infection. So if we're able to, you know, open up the barriers to penetration, then that could definitely help with um, better therapies. But I mean, these are all questions that are really pertinent and are ones that I'm, yeah, trying to figure out. And it feels like each question unto itself could be a little bit of a breakthrough into figuring out how to use less antibiotics as a society. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, I think like, you know, one of the big thoughts in using focused ultrasound as a as a cancer therapy is one of the challenges of, of chemotherapy, which we all know, is that um, it can cause a lot of burden on just our healthy cells in our body, um, which is why, you know, you lose hair with chemotherapy or have really, you know, challenging um, side effects. And one of the thoughts with, with using ultrasound as a way of mitigating that is that, you know, if you are able to push more of your drugs into a tumor, then less of the drug is going elsewhere. And so that's kind of what we're hypothesizing with antibiotic therapy as well. Like if we can push more antibiotics into the infection that they're actually meant to hit, then maybe we can spare some of the, you know, good bacteria in the rest of our body. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot of sleepless nights ahead of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This podcast was brought to you by Oxford Sparks from the University of Oxford. With music by John Lyons and a special thanks to Dr. Sarah Keller. Tell us what you think about this podcast. Twitter still exists and you can find us there. We are at Oxford Sparks. You can find us on Facebook, any other social media platform of your choosing. And we've got other cool stuff on our website, oxfordsparks.ox.ac.uk. I'm Emily Elias. Bye for now.